One of the most common questions I receive from people experiencing narcissistic abuse is how do they move on and begin to build and regain their life that was stolen from them, that was crushed because of narcissistic family members or a narcissistic spouse? Because in these dynamics, it sure can feel like you're robbed of being able to be the person that you truly want to be, the person that you know you can be. How do we get to that place? Well, fortunately, I have a special guest that's going to help me tackle this question. Mr. Jerry Weiss is going to be joining me in just a moment. But before we do get there, I want to let you know that I am here to support you. Down in the description box below this video, you'll find access for one-on-one -on -one appointments with me. I do take telephone calls as well as video calls through Zoom, FaceTime, and WhatsApp. So if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one support because you're tired of being crushed under the pressure of narcissistic abuse from family or even a marriage... You're not living up to who you know you can be. Head on down there. Schedule some time with me. I'd like to help you resolve this issue. Also, I have a coaching program. My coaching program is live and in person each and every day. We operate out of a journal and a diary. So if you're looking to work within a group of people to map out your 2024 away from toxicity, join the Roby Coaching Program. By the way, if you join right now, I'm throwing in my custom finger painting logo. You can put it on your phone home screen just like this. It's an excellent reminder that you are the royal we. Now, let's get into this topic. Again, how do you build yourself back up, give yourself permission, live the life that you are called to live? Joining me for this topic is Jerry Weiss. Jerry, welcome to the royal we. The royal we welcomes you, is very grateful for you to be here and to help us tackle this issue that can be very difficult for a lot of people. Now, before we get into how to build ourselves up and break the cycle of feeling like you can't live your life because of narcissistic abuse, I have a question for you, and I know a lot of people struggle with this question. Maybe you can help us understand the mechanism of toxic people, maybe family members, parents, or a spouse, that narcissism. What's the mechanism that drives them to want to crush their partner's individuality, their authenticity? Uh, makes it seem like anything that they do is unworthy. Uh, and even if they're it, having peace or even if they're just calm, what sends a narcissistic person into a rage over that? If you can help us understand this. Great. Thanks, Kevin. The primary mechanism, I think, is a toxic enmeshment in which we are over emotionally close and they have built that all through our childhood also all through the marriage whatever relationship we have it's an over closeness and not a detachment so we have that over closeness that happens and that keeps us in this painful thing and and if we try to adjust that closeness the narcissist is going to go into the rage because you're depriving them of this unhealthy, toxic enmeshment, because that provides them with a self. So in order for a narcissistic person to experience a self, it has to be a weird amalgamation of the two selves being one. So you're no longer you, you're them and they're you kind of a thing. So if you're experiencing then joy and laughter at anything, a music or a joke, and they're not, it can be triggering for them. Oh, Is absolutely. this basically how it works? Pinged. They'll be pinged unconsciously. Their anxiety will go up and then they will be reactive. And then they then cause us to be pinged. Our anxiety goes up and then we are reactive. And now we just have this reactive dance going on between the two of us. And that's called family life. You know, or, <laughs> toxic you know, family emotional, life. Toxic family. Or I call it malignant normalcy. You know. Well, I'll tell you what. I, I know I speak on behalf of the royal we when I say it. I get it. I hear you. But it just sounds so strange. Because most of us do not walk around looking at relationships or friendships as us being so joined that they cannot experience laughter without us. It's it seems foreign. Oh, yeah. oh, but yeah. I get but I get that it's real, obviously. 
And we experience this, but it can be very mind numbing for people going through it. Like what is going on? Why can't I laugh? Why can't I, why can't I be excited that I bought myself this iWatch? Why can't I be excited that I just accomplished this thing? These people really are offended by it almost. Because you are not to be excited. That's not, or happy. That's not the super self or the role the family has developed for you emotionally. Ah. Uh. You're programmed to not like that. It's not that you truly don't like it. You like the, hey, I'm glad I bought this, but now I feel weird about it, or I don't know why I can't enjoy that as much. Those are what we call systems feelings. True feelings is, you tell me my mother has passed away, I feel sad. That's a true feeling. A systems feeling is, Oh, I shouldn't feel, I should feel guilty for buying this watch. That guilt is fake guilt. It's systems guilt. It was built into the narcissistic or dysfunctional family. And most narcissistic families operate as a system. At and you're either a part of the system. Oh, did you say all families operate as a all system? All families are a, part, are, are a system. Every government is a system. The universe is a system. A marriage is a system. A, a nuclear family is a system. It's an emotional system. Wow. It's an emotional system. You know, it's interesting because a lot of people think that narcissism is new. It's not new. Right? <laughs> Good, evil, bullies, violence. It's been around since Cain killed his brother Abel in the Old Testament of the Bible. But what really? does seem to be happening is there seems to be a separation of systems. There seems to be this conversation that we have now started on YouTube and in other places that says, hey, if this system is not resonating with you, you don't have to be a part of it. And I don't want to get too far down this rabbit hole because we can get into trouble, but it's not only with family, but it also seems to be happening within politics. I think we've all seen this type of thing in politics. It's like we see the, the stronghold of a certain type of system you have to do things this way, and if you don't, we will cuss you out, call you names, burn down your villages, <laughs> literally in some situations, because this is the system. And it's enough to drive people insane, and, and most people experience this at their family level. And so if you think about it, a lot of times what happens in the political world and in governments is you see that in your family. When you're the one saying, no, I don't want to do what you guys are doing, they're like, well, there's going to be a nice beat down for you. Because, I mean, this is, wow, interesting. So I don't want to get too dark, far down that deep, that, that rabbit no, hole, unless our viewers, if you all want a part two, then maybe Jerry and I will get deeper into it in, an, in another video. But Absolutely. let's st yes. <laughs> let's stay on track with this one. So how do we help people when they get out of toxic relationships now, or perhaps they're still in it, but start to shake off the chains that have been put around them because they're dealing with people who have made them feel ashamed. And by the way, I was one of those people for the longest time I was dealing with in-laws and it got to the point that I could not bring my iPhone. I had an iPhone. I could not bring it over because when I had my iPhone, it was nonstop attacks if they saw it. And it was, and I know, and here's, everybody's going to understand this. Narcissistic people say, oh, we're just joking. No, no, you're not. I, we can see it out the corner of your eye. You're trying to inflict pain. It's not a joke. And so, especially when it gets to the point where you feel like you got to hide it. So I've been there and it does leave its mark on you. I can attest to this. It makes it so that you do start to live life a little bit more cautiously. You do start to go out into the world and you want to hide this. I'm going to be honest with you right now, Jerry, and with the viewers. When it comes to the Royal We, I moved to St. Louis out of California, and it took me four years before I became comfortable as I meet people in St. Louis, Missouri. I was comfortable enough to tell them, this is what I do. I'm the Royal We. It was a hidden thing that right. it wasn't hidden out of shame because I'm not ashamed of it. I've, I loved it, and I've been helping people all these years. 
but I just didn't feel like I, I was allowed. There was this, this threat. Well, what's going to happen? What's going to be attacked? So I've been there. I know a lot of people are in the same spot, Jerry. How do we start to break these? How do we understand how we get this way and then start to break it? And those threats are historic. And we can do archaeology in our emotional past to find where we began to learn. When when a when a husband comes to me and says, I just don't know how to stop being angry at my wife for blah 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 blah. I always go, Well, where did that begin? Well, it began with our marriage. No, 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 no. It didn't begin with your marriage. It began way before that. And so our families are our first, it's a big super self. And certainly you wouldn't say an infant has a self, right? And they don't have a self in that regard. They're growing up to become a self mm -hmm. and to become an adult. And we all start that way. We all start that way with healthy enmeshment or dependency. But then it should begin to individual. We individuate and yes. we be ourselves. In a narcissistic home, individuation is not, no, no, that, that doesn't fit into our emotional process and dynamic here. Mm. And so then when people, let's say, okay, now I'm going to go no contact. Okay, they, they are crazy and they hurt me and they do all kinds of bad things with their uh, narcissistic symptoms of all kinds that I have no empathy, no, okay, I'm going to go no contact. That's where I come in and go, okay, now you've gotten out of the narcissistic family. How do we get the narcissistic family out of you? Let me ask you this. Is it possible, Jerry, you're talking about no contact even with family. This is something that I, I help coach people with as well. And I've, I've done experience this. Move my family across five states to get away from family. So I know how it's effective. And I also know, like what you just touched on, just because you get away from the toxic family does not mean you've got them out of your it system. Still they're still there. <laughs> there's there's still a haunting it thing. Good, but they're but, still in us. But one of the things I want to tackle before we even get to that deep, dark, murky territory of why that family still lives in you, I really want your help on tackling just how important no contact actually is that you cannot do anything that we are how important is it to to achieve anything that we're talking about individuate even a fighting chance at life how important is that to get away from the toxicity is it even possible to do it while being in contact while seeing them what are your thoughts All people are in are individuals. Every situation is unique. So there are some people who can do that. There are many people who cannot do that or don't want to do that. And we have a right as adults to decide whether we want or not want. Even without being reactive, I can choose this. In fact, I don't even recommend reactive no contact. I like mature no contact, not reactive. Because... Well, there's reasons for that. But anyway, so uh, there are many people who uh, will decide to go no contact. Then we have, uh, now we, w what about the family that I have been a part of emotionally for such a long period of time? Or I've been with narcissists or people in my life who have been narcissistic. I've had a narcissistic relationship. Oh my gosh, that was, oh geez, what a mess. And, um, <laughs> And it affected me, for sure. And that, okay, now, now that I'm no longer, and, and well, no con. oh, I know, the question was, how important would it be to go no contact? Yes. And, and I believe healing comes when you can go to the water fountain and begin to take a drink of water, take a break, do some healing, go back and drink the water, let's say. It, bad analogy, but it still might be useful. If you stay in contact with the narcissist, 
then you're drinking from a fire hose and you're trying to heal. Mm-hmm. How are you? What, right. What, are you right. going to have faith? You've got your hand over a fire constantly being burned. It has no chance to, to heal. It, yeah. It well, I'm, under, heal. I'm under the impression that no contact is, in some way, shape, or form is super in, important. And you're right, however, in that it might look different for everybody. Not everybody can move five states away to get away from people. However, being able to stand up and say, no, I'm not going to this party. No, I'm not going to be there for Christmas Eve this year. Uh, no, just let your yes be yes, your no be no. And in this way, this casserole, I don't have time to do that. No, I'm not going to meet with you every week. No, I don't want you to call me every other day. Yes. And now, you hit on a. Yeah. You hit and, on important. And if there is some respect of boundaries, you might be able to use that to grow. If there right. is zero respect of boundaries, uh, and with a- narcissistic and toxic family members, there's rarely respect for boundaries. But you hit on a very important piece, and that is that you believe in healthy no contact, not a a game of it, which is something you know. Typically, a lot of people will. In my coaching practice, they'll say, how long do I go no contact for? And, I, and I'm like, uh, well, ah, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> you know, right there, this this mindset, be careful of this, because what it might suggest is that you're, you're looking at it as a game. How long do I punish them? How long until they're going to, you know, realize their mistake and I can start talking to them again? No, no, no. It's, it's right. by the time you're, by the time you're ready to go no contact with family, punish or to it's, change them no it's, it's to change not, your life it's, it's to it's change you <laughs> right it's to allow you the opportunity to finally let your no be no to stand firm to say these are my boundaries my life my space my castle boom you're and by the way narcissistic people as you said if they can respect boundaries many of them are going to try to push it down They're, they'll try to storm your castle you know, the moment they see you trying to build a castle, they're going to want to storm it. And so it's it's going to take some effort and some some grit to be able to stand firm. Uh, but thank you for talking on that about how important it is to go no contact to begin this healing journey. I also want to real quick talk now, though, about once you do leave, as you suggested, and I know this firsthand, it does not mean that the chains and the shackles are gone. You see, there seem the narcissistic family members, ghosts, if you will, seem to have their arms wrapped around you wherever you go. I've said it this way wherever you go, there you are. And so, oftentimes, whatever pain and discomfort, and even the pressure of not being able to live your life, if this is where you were when you left, oftentimes you still have this when you've gone to a new place or gone no contact. So help us understand that a little bit better, Jerry. Well, here's an example of somebody that might come to see me and they go, oh, I went no contact uh, three years ago with my narcissistic family. I hate every one of them. Every time I think of them, I want to kill them. I I tell everybody how awful they were. I, and I'm going, I thought you said you went no contact. Well, I haven't. I haven't talked to them at all. No, no. You're talking to them every day. It Stop up here. Doing that. You know, up here and in here. Exactly. Yes. You're still the conversations going. Is still going on. Yeah. And we need to expel that dialogue. We need to come to a neutrality, a detachment, a because here's i give in to everything and try to love them and make them love me then i go over here and i go i hate them they're horrible they do everything wrong well that's a hundred that's 180 degrees bad to bad it's just the other right. side of bad come to here where you go they don't matter yes well now i'm excited 
Jerry, whoops, wrong screen. I'm excited, Jerry, because this is now where you get to talk about your coaching program a little bit because the biggest question of all time is, well, how? Because the chains right. and the presence of that haunting of the ghosts of the narcissist past in your life, whether it's family or a spouse, can really feel wrapped around you. So much oh. so that I, and I hear this too in my coaching practice as well, Jerry, that yes, I, I hate them and why, and I'm, I get it. You're still oh, talking. You, yeah, you're talking guy. to him in your mind, ruminating. You're, you're so we call it ruminating. Like while you're talking to me. You know, yeah, exactly. You're, you're so talking to me about them. Maybe offer some of the steps that you help people work through in your coaching practice without giving away too much of what you do. But how do you help? How would you summarize how to help somebody get to that balanced place? And I never go to them and say, you just snap your fingers and it's all done. There Doesn't is happen. no miracle. I'm not. So I'm and nor am I shaming you if you struggle with this. But let me tell you, let's talk now. It's been years now and you've been dealing with this and you so want them not to be there anymore within you. Then I go, but you're not ready for them not to be in you. Now, I want to find out because if you were ready, they'd be gone. And that's okay. That we all go through those phases. It's perfectly okay to not be ready. If you no longer hated them in this way, talked about them in this way, and did not uh, entertain those feelings of disgust and all that stuff that you've had, which which I understand was legitimate. That they, they did horrible things. I, I'm not, but. We're talking about your healing now, not theirs. Mm. If you gave that up, what would be the downside? Ooh. Loneliness. Loneliness, isolation. Right. It, the, the typical then, stuff. Then that... I have no family at all. Exactly. Now, I don't see my family, don't want to, but now I'm really putting a nail in that coffin. <laughs> right right and i don't and i can't do that I, I and i still maybe hope for their change or reclamation maybe maybe i'm still hoping for that so if i keep being angry and because you're continuing to have this relationship with them you just told me you went no contact well then why are you having this relationship with them inside mm. why are you dealing with them and let me help you to stop dealing. Yeah, so you can I, start so you can start living. So you can start living. Exactly. I think a lot of people will resonate with this. There is a significant breaking point in our life. And for me, it happened when my, my father passed away. And my mother passed away back in 2006. My dad passed away a few years ago. I was beating my chest out there when my father passed away. I don't, can't rely on the in-laws. That's for dang sure, right? And so I had this moment where I was beating my chest saying, I have nobody. I have nobody. If I, it, it, That's really what it was. I have right. nobody. And it's when I had this moment where I finally heard Kevin, you don't get anybody. You are dad. You, you are family. You are. You don't get to have the mommy and daddy you haven't had that since your late teens i believe exactly. part of what we're up against yeah if we're on and, and if we're honest i never had it all i had growing up was the conditioned belief the idealization of what hallmark cards showed at christmas time and and what schools promoted and what television and leave it to beaver and this is what I had circulate in my mind, but I never had anything that really looked close to that. And so I think that this is that breaking point, Jerry, that we all get to, which is a heavy thing. A lot of people don't get there until their parents are deceased. That's when it really sets in. I have nobody. So if we can really get to people to a place before that, such as leaving their toxic relationships, having that breaking moment of, I have no parents. I'm, they're not going to save me. They can't live my life. They can't fill me with love. They can't 
it's not going to happen. Break those chains so that you can take seriously now your own role in this life, what you have to do, who you have to become. On and it's, on. It's better that we hate somebody than have nobody. The thing is, that is a false choice. Yeah. But we have grown up in families where we think that's the choice. Oh, well, I'm going to say how awful they are. And you just, I got to tell my story about all the horrible things they did, which they did. I mean, it's not a lie. There's nothing. But I can tell my story without staying in dialogue with them. And that's the point. I don't want, I can tell you my story, but I, I don't want it to exercise me. I don't want it to give me anxiety and anger and because then they're still just living in there. No different than when I did marriage and family therapy for many, many years, a couple of divorces. Five years later, the wife is still calling the husband a knucklehead, that stupid guy that does it. And I'm going, you're still not divorced. Because anger, hate, resentment, bitterness towards someone is always pursuit. You're pursuing them. Stop pursuing them. Jerry, that is so profound. That is powerful because yes, stop pursuing them. This now then gets into the question that most people have is emotionally, mentally, the challenge that people come up and we can probably finish this discussion on this topic. People don't know what to pursue and if it's okay to pursue the things that they don't know they want to pursue yet how what how do we practically start doing this good question great question <laughs> the um because i want to know what you're going to do when you stop pursuing them mm. what's left you and pursuing you mm. If you want to have a good relationship with other people, pursue you. If you um, if you want to carry bad relationships into other relationships, pursue them in terms of negative hate and all that kind of stuff. Because we're not we're a whole. If I hate my narcissistic family. You think that's not going to affect any other part of my life? Now, I'll tell you, I'm justified in hating them. You don't know what they did. You don't know. I understand all that. I, it's awful. But we're talking about your healing now. Your life. And your life. You, you're not, we're not going to change them. And we don't have a time machine doesn't mean we shouldn't go back and do some healing and some, I, I understand all that, but we still don't have a time machine. And so we want to begin to let go of that and to help. And I try to help them understand why letting go is so important. Just like I say, um, I might say to them, you know, well, well then why are you pursuing your narcissistic parents right now? What do you mean? Why am I pursuing them? I've gone no contact. I've told all of my kids we're not going to have any relationship with their grandparents. I've told everybody. <laughs> and I'm, okay. Oh, okay. I, I, I'm with you. Yeah. Now. But why aren't, but you're not done with them. And that is a choice. Mm. You just it's don't. Oh, it's a choice. It's a scary thing for a lot of people because this gets back into the territory of, but I don't feel I have permission to do the things I want to do. Maybe I want to do yoga, but I've been shamed by my church to do that. Maybe I want to be a dancer, but I've been shamed by these people for doing that. Am I good enough? Can I? And this is where a lot of people are. It's experiencing life almost, almost, this is what I've discovered you almost have to almost purposefully be willing to go against everything that you were told you shouldn't be doing. Experience it. Experience well, it. Up against that super self that has been so normal. 
I also wanted to share the um, with someone who is um, oh, it was about hating and uh, and then pursuing them. Oh shoot! Well, it'll probably come back to me, but it was it was about uh, how we let go and why we need to let go uh, mm-hmm. of them because it's. Uh, you know, if, if we're pursuing them with our, oh, I, I know what it was. If I let go of all of this hate, bitterness, anger, now that I've come to alive to see what happened, you know, now that I'm out of denial, you know, but it's been years. I'm not talking about the first time somebody realizes they will grow up in a narcissistic home. I try to get them to stop feeling those things. No, that's a normal healing process. But now we're five, six, seven years down the road, and you're just as angry as you were on year one. Because if I give up this bitterness, anger, and hate, how will they be punished? Where mm. will the justice be? Mm. And I need to. Good question. I what are your thoughts on what are your thoughts on justice, Jerry? Break this down. What 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 do you tell somebody? What do you tell somebody who witnesses somebody get away with murder who wants justice? How do you help them resolve that? I would help them by you're not God. That's number one. Number two. This world is filled with injustice. If you're waiting on justice, you're going to be the most miserable person on earth. Mm. Give Mm. yourself some justice, which is what you're looking for. And don't abandon you because that's partly why you want to get back at them. Because you're still abandoning you. Let's not abandon you and you may find peace and justice for yourself. Jerry, that is well put. I don't know how we could have ended this any better. I think that is fantastic. Jerry, I want to thank you uh, for joining the Rowie platform for this discussion. And I would like to ask any of the viewers, if you'd like to see more from Jerry on the Royal We, leave your comment down below message me, let us know any topics that you would like to tackle, and we'll see if we can do this again. Jerry, thank you for spending time with the Royal We. The Royal We is very grateful for you being here. Appreciate it. All right? Thank you, Kevin, for having me. It's been a joy. All right. Thank you. If you are brand new to the Royal We, be sure to subscribe. Hit the like button down below. Share this video with somebody who needs to watch this video. Also, I encourage you to watch one of these videos right here, recommended by the YouTube algorithm, because it knows what you've been watching. And I know that sounds creepy, but it's for your best. So check out one of these videos, and I will be back with more videos right here on the Royal Wii.